Sometimes we end up with an interaction inside of a component that needs to trigger something outside of that component. Well, a special type of interaction in Framer called an event makes that possible. In this lesson, we'll explore a couple common examples of scenarios where events save the day. For this one, I've done very little setup ahead of time, so that way we can walk through all the steps together. But just to remind you of where we're headed, we've got a toggle that we created in a previous lesson, and within that toggle, we have some interactions. But we want to use that toggle within another component where we can click to go between three different variants that change the alignment of the text and the icon that we see above it. So the bottom line is we want to create a parent component that uses a child component and the functionality within that to drive some of the transitions that are happening in the parent component. So let's take a look at the project and how that's set up here. I've got a parent frame here called interactive alignment. And within that, I've got some text frames. I've got an icon and I've got that toggle component that we created in a previous lesson. Now, it's no problem to take this whole parent frame and just right click and create a component from that. We can create components that have child components within them. No big deal. I'm going to leave the name at interactive alignment and I'm going to click create. And now here we're ready to set up those variants for the text being left aligned, middle aligned and right aligned. So I'm going to do just that. I'm actually going to start with the left aligned text since our first variant is going to have the left aligned button selected. So with this frame selected, I'm going to change our alignment to left and then I'm going to select our heading frame and our body frame, which have separate text boxes for everything. So that way they'll all become aligned when I switch the alignment to the left. Cool. So that's really it for this first variant. Now we can create the other two. So I'm going to select the primary variant and I'm going to zoom out a bit so that we can see the button to create our next variant. And I'm going to click on that and click it again. So that way we have all three of our variants. We just need to make our adjustments in the other two. So I'm going to start with variant two. I'm going to zoom in on this and with that lockup frame selected, I'll center it to get the icon in the middle and then I'll select the heading and body frames again, center align those. And then finally, I'll select our component at the bottom. And for this one, I'll select our item two variant. So that way we see that center alignment icon highlighted when we're looking at the center aligned variant of this parent component. And for the third one, I'll zoom in here. And with this frame selected, we'll right align. These two will right align as well. And for our toggle component here at the bottom, we'll go and switch that to the item three variant that has that third right align icon selected. Cool. But now the problem emerges because I need to link the individual triggers within this toggle component to the different variants in the parent component. And because this is a component, it behaves like one solid layer and all of its interactivity is encapsulated in its own little bubble. So. This is exactly where events come in. We need each icon within the child component to be able to shout up to the parent component, hey, I've been clicked. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to double click on our toggle component and we're going to come in here and do everything on the primary variant. So that way, everything we do here gets inherited by the other two variants. And I'm going to start by selecting this first icon and I'm going to add an additional interaction to this, but this time, I'm going to choose to create a new event. And when I do so, the variables modal comes up and I get to give this a name. So I'm going to name this left. I am going to try to give these events different names from the variants themselves. So that way it's easier to tell things apart as you're watching this lesson. So left is going to be my first icon here and I'll hit return on the keyboard to lock that in. And then I'll select the second icon. I'll create another event, new event here, and I'll name this one middle, hit return. And now this third one, I'm going to do a little bit differently just to show you an alternative way that you can add events and map them to the individual layers that are on the canvas. So rather than selecting this and adding the event from here, I'm going to show you that you can open up the variables modal at any time from the toolbar at the top, and you can see any existing variables that you've created. And it's from here that you could rename them or remove them. But you can also come up to the plus sign and you can choose to add a variable. And one of our variables that we get to choose from is an event. So essentially, an event is just a variable for interactions. And here I'm going to name this one right. But because I came straight to the modal and added this event variable, 
it hasn't actually been connected to any of the layers on the canvas. So I'm gonna dismiss the modal. I'm gonna select our item three layer here and I'm gonna add an interaction, but instead of choosing new event, I'm gonna to go to choose event to pick an existing one where I can find right and select that. So there we go. We've got one event being triggered when we click the first icon. We've got another event being triggered when we click the second icon. And we've got a third event being triggered when we click the third icon. They're called left, middle, and right. So what actually happens is now when we go back to the parent component and we have this child component selected, we've got some new interactions that show up on the properties panel on the right hand side. So now we can say what actually happens when the left event gets triggered? What actually happens when the middle event gets triggered? And what actually happens when the right event gets triggered? So we'll start with the left event. When the left event gets triggered, I would like to add a new transition that goes to the first variant because variant one is the one where everything is left aligned. And you probably guessed it, we then wanna to go to the middle variant, add a new transition and have that go to variant two because variant two is the one where I had everything aligned in the middle. And finally, we wanna to go to the right event. We wanna add a new transition and we want this one to go to variant three. So there we go, now let's preview this. If I click on the second icon, the middle event gets fired and the middle event triggers the transition to variant two. If I click on the right icon, it's gonna trigger the event called right and the event called right is going to transition to the third variant. So events are successfully translating what's going on within the child component so that the parent component can transition to the right variant. Awesome. And one last thing I want to show you is arguably one of the most common use cases for events, and that's using an interaction within a component to close an overlay. So I'm going to leave this preview here. I'm going to go to the pages panel and head to the third page of this project. And in this project, if I preview this, I'll press command P on my Mac. I'll click open overlay. We've got an overlay here with a contact form and this whole contact form is a component. So the close button actually exists within the component and we wanna be able to use that to close the overlay. So if I go back here and just show you the anatomy of this on the layers panel, triggered by my CTA button, I've got this overlay, and then here we've got this form component. And because it's a component, again, it behaves like one giant layer where that button and everything else is encapsulated within it in its own little bubble. So what we're gonna do is double click on the component. We're gonna select the close button. We're gonna head up here to interactions like we did before. We'll create a new event. And I'm just gonna name the event close and hit return, and there we go. Now when clicking on the little close icon, an event called close will be triggered. So if we go back to where this overlay exists, with the overlay selected, more specifically with the form selected, we've got our close event, and we can choose what that actually triggers within the context of this overlay. And if I click, we only get one option, the option to close the overlay. So naturally, that's the one I'm gonna choose. And I don't want any sort of delay, so I'll head straight to preview by pressing Command-P on my Mac. And when I open the overlay, here we go, here's the component. And unlike when we're editing, all of the nested functionality of the component becomes accessible, including clicking on that button to trigger that event, which in turn tells the overlay to close. And the last thing worth mentioning is there are elements that actually have special events that are built into them to trigger transitions when certain things happen. So like a video, for example, a video could trigger a transition when the video plays, when the video pauses, or when the playback of the video gets scrubbed. And similarly, a form could trigger a transition when it's submitted successfully or if it runs into an error. And I'll teach you more about that in our dedicated course on forms. And there you have it. Now you know how events are sort of like variables, but for interactions. And let us bubble up interactions within a child component that can be used in a parent component or overlay. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one.